There is a war between Java and Bedrock. Which one has the better building? Which one has the better PvP? The Minecraft community is very divided on these questions. But another part of the debate that's less talked about is the redstone. You see, redstone on Java and redstone on Bedrock are very different, which leads to a lot of people getting frustrated with redstone videos because the contraption doesn't work on their edition of Minecraft. I make Java redstone, and I get a lot of comments asking if or when I'm going to start making Bedrock redstone as well? And the answer is, mm, no, I won't. And here's why. The first reason is fairly obvious, but I'll include it anyway. When I started playing Minecraft, Bedrock Edition didn't exist. Java is what I started with, and it's what I'm used to. I could do Bedrock Redstone, but I just don't want to. Next up, we have the elephant in the room. In Java Edition, there is a magical thing called quasi-connectivity, but for convenience, we just call it QC. Basically, QC lets you power pistons from diagonally above or from two blocks directly above. And it's a bug that's existed ever since pistons were added. Mojang basically copied and pasted code from wooden doors into pistons, so they think they're two blocks tall when they're actually not. There were many people calling for Mojang to remove QC because they found it janky and unintuitive, and of course because it's a bug. But in the end, Mojang decided to keep it and make it a feature because it's one of those glitches that just makes the game better. Without QC, most of the redstone on my channel wouldn't have been possible. All that lightning fast zero tick stuff? Forget it. Once you've used QC, there's no going back. And that brings us to Bedrock. It doesn't have QC, so there are fewer ways to power pistons, and fewer piston arrangements are possible, and that fact alone makes me less inclined to make Bedrock Redstone. But by itself, it's actually not a deal breaker. The rest of the reasons, though, are deal breakers. In Java, if you power a piston and then quickly unpower it, it will leave its block behind, so you can unstick blocks from sticky pistons. And you guessed it, you can't do this in Bedrock. Instead, you have to put another piston behind and power that one, which is slower. The lack of QC already made fewer piston arrangements possible, but this aspect of bedrock pistons just made the problem worse. And there's another problem with bedrock pistons. In Java, if you put an immovable block in the way of a piston, power it, then break the immovable block, it won't push out until you update the piston in some way. This is a block update detector, or BUD for short. It makes timing piston extensions easier, it allows for more ways to build specific circuits, and it can detect stuff faster than observers can. Neither Needless to say, it's a really useful feature, but if I try the same thing in Bedrock, the piston pushes as soon as I break the immovable block, even though nothing updated it. The piston is constantly checking to see if it can push. Not only does this have fewer uses, but it's just one more thing passively causing lag in your world. It's not just pistons though. Java's observers can detect a lot of things that Bedrock observers just can't, the most important one being note blocks, so you have to use rails instead. But this is a problem, because rails Rails can't float. They need a support block underneath them. And in many redstone builds, something might need to be there that rails can't be placed on. Note blocks solve this issue, but that's only on Java. The next point isn't really to do with redstone itself, but rather mod support. Java Edition has one of, if not the biggest modding communities in the world. Some Java mods have more downloads than actual AAA games. So if there's a specific tool you need to test your redstone, chances are somebody's already made it. And there's a bunch of these mods that many redstoners can't live without. They make the process of designing and testing redstone so much more streamlined. World Edit and Lightmatica let you quickly edit terrain and make backups of builds, so if something breaks, you can quickly paste it back in. Minecraft structure blocks just don't cut it. Carpet Mod gives you a plethora of tools to test farms. Game Speed lets you speed up and slow down the game, so you can easily figure out problems with timing. Capture and Playback lets you test if a piston sequence works without having to wire it first. And Block Event Separator lets you see problems in Zero Tick Redstone that will be completely invisible without it, even if you did slow down the game. Bedrock Edition does have some limited mod support. Okay, yeah, it has World Edit, but most of the mods are nowhere near as powerful as Java mods, and they're tedious to set up. And this means that designing and testing Redstone in Bedrock is a slower process, because you have to spend more time guessing what went wrong and manually fixing things, so you can't spend as much time actually building the Redstone. 
Python, and it only gets worse from here. In Java, we have something called update order, and the simplest way to explain it is with two pistons and a redstone torch. Now, take a guess. When we turn on the torch, which piston gets to extend first? It powers both at the same time, but we can only let one of them push. This is where update order comes in. It gives the game some rules to follow, so it doesn't just randomly pick one. Now, if you guess the top piston, then you'd be correct. The top piston always powers first. You might disagree with how it works. Maybe you think the bottom one should go first because it's directly next to the torch. Fair enough, that's a valid point. But ultimately, that doesn't matter. What's important is that it does the same thing every time. This is known as deterministic behavior. It makes redstone predictable in ambiguous cases like this one. Update order literally makes redstone work. So how is this different in Bedrock? Well, Bedrock doesn't have an update order. It's random, so something that works 100% of the time in Java might only work half the time in Bedrock, if we're being generous. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of want my redstone to work 100% of the time. I don't want a slot machine. Take the device you're watching this on as an example. The electronics inside it work precisely because they're not random. If they were, it would crash all the time. Heck, it'll be a miracle if it even turned on. And since redstone is basically just electrical circuitry turned into a fun little game, why should it be any different? The randomness just adds frustration. There are only two ways to get around Bedrock's RNG. You need to either slow everything down or avoid cases like this entirely, which greatly limits the number of ways you can make your redstone. And even if it does work in the end, it's an extra hurdle that we really shouldn't have to jump through in the first place. Randomized redstone doesn't make it better in any way. It just makes it slower. And that leads to my next point. Bedrock redstone is isn't just slower because the randomness forces it to be, it's slower because it's just bloody slower. Take a look at this redstone clock, for example. Now, the keen-eyed among you may have noticed that the bedrock clock is twice as slow as the Java clock. Here's another example. This is a bedrock piston, turning on and off as fast as it can. And this is a Java piston. There's just no contest. Bedrock pistons are hard-coded to stay extended for a certain amount of time before retracting again. And Java pistons aren't, so they're just plain better. All these differences in speed, timing, and update order have led some people to call for Java and Bedrock Redstone to be made the same. But this isn't really feasible. After all, Bedrock is coded in C++, while Java is coded in, well, uh, yeah. yeah. Now, if we just ignore that problem for a second, what would happen if we could take a Java piston and put it in bedrock? Well, it wouldn't fix anything. And of all the bad things about Bedrock Redstone, this one annoys me the most. Java and Bedrock Minecraft both have a little clock inside them that ticks 20 times every second. And everything in the game is controlled by this little ticking clock. Every time that clock counts up, we call that a game tick. Now, Java Redstone runs at the full 20 ticks per second. But Bedrock Redstone just isn't like the other girls. It's all quirky and different. In Bedrock, some Redstone components, like a Observers will only do stuff on odd numbered ticks, while other components like rails only do stuff on even ticks. What does all that garbage mean? Well, for our Java piston, it means that any redstone timing you give it is forced to be an even number. And that's a problem, since much of Java piston behavior relies on being able to have odd timings. So bedrock redstone is less precise. Even if you perfectly copied and pasted a Java piston into bedrock, it wouldn't function the same, since it has to play by bedrock's rules. And if we go back to that redstone clock from earlier, the reason it's slower in bedrock is because the rails aren't allowed to turn on at the same time the observers power them, even though rails are supposed to turn on immediately. This also makes timing in bedrock more confusing, because combining certain redstone components introduces hidden delays that shouldn't be there. I know Java gets a bad rap for being unintuitive at times, but this part of bedrock redstone really takes the cake. Needless to say, bedrock's underlying redstone system is an absolute mess mess. If you wanted the two versions to work the same, you'd have to rewrite all of Java Redstone or all of Bedrock Redstone, which Mojang can't do without angering one side or the other. And I don't think they'd do that just for the sake of Redstone parity. So if I did start doing Bedrock Redstone, I wouldn't be able to think of it as anything but a downgrade. Yeah. But okay, I've dunked on Bedrock Redstone enough now. There are some good things about it that Java doesn't have. In both versions, you can make Redstone dust only travel one way, using a trans 
transparent block like a slab. But there are times where you need to use a slab for some other reason, but you still want the redstone to travel downwards. In Java, you can't do this. But in Bedrock, you can. You just use glass instead. So here, Bedrock has the best of both worlds. In Bedrock, you can waterlog some redstone components, whereas in Java, most redstone breaks if it gets even a little damp. Bedrock also has movable chests, furnaces, hoppers, and so on, which is very useful for storage tech and flying machines. Bedrock comparators can read stuff through pistons and chains, which would also be very useful for storage tech. If you put a redstone torch on the side of a piston and power it, the torch will turn off. And this has a fancy name. It's called a soft inversion. And if we had this in Java, it would work very nicely with QC. These things are tempting, but they're just not enough to convince me to do bedrock redstone. Its flaws greatly outweigh the benefits, at least for me. But now I'm going to go into hiding because I've probably angered a lot of bedrock players. Subscribe.